the RC sub guy with the Nautilus dry docks, and this is an OTW Valiant class submarine kit that has been set up for RC operation. What I want to do in this video is walk you through everything that I've done to get it set up and ready for the customer to complete the buildup. Uh, I will go through the watertight cylinder, the internal components of the cylinder, how they all fit together, and how everything gets installed into the model. Again, my name is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy. Thanks for joining me. Let's get started. All right, we've got the cylinder laying out on the workbench here right now, and it's basically all set up 100% ready to go. I am going to disassemble it so that I can show you what the internal components of this boat look like. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a slot headed screwdriver. I'm gonna put it in the, in the slot on the battery end cap, give it a little twist. I'm gonna move around the perimeter there, just pry off that end cap. If I pull this forward, what we've got here is, um, the main connection for the um, power for the forward compartment. I'm just going to disconnect that. And then we've got our main drive battery. And this is all one piece. I'll show you what that looks like. We've got a 12 uh, volt, 5 amp hour battery. So this is a, a 5 amp battery pack. Nickel metal hydride. Um, it connects to this remote on off switch and I love these things it's rated for 15 amps and basically what it allows you to do is turn the model on and off without having to open up the cylinder or have openings in the bulkheads for switches so you can see that's completely solid on the outside it uses radio waves to communicate with this switch and turn the model on and off you can see that remote key fob right here hanging off of the transmitter um, talking about the transmitter, this is a VEX Robotics six channel computerized uh, radio. These are great units, uh, very economical. And uh, unfortunately for us, pretty well the only game in town left for 75 megahertz operation, which is the legal frequency for operating submarines in North America. So we've got our four forward channels and then we've got two on the back that are controlled via these buttons. Um, just to review the way that I've got the control set up on this particular boat, uh, the right stick controls the forward dive planes and the rudder. The other stick controls the throttle and this is a spare channel, it's unused. On the back, on the left hand side if you grip it, you've got ballast control, up surfaces the model, down submerges the model. And on the other side, channel 6, you've got the override for the automatic depth control system that controls the rear dive planes. So pushing up will surface the model, pushing down will dive the model. So that's your radio system with the remote key fob. Moving to the other side of the cylinder, uh, look on the outside here, you can see this long latex hose and uh, if you pop that open you can actually see the, the receiver antenna is inside there and the purpose for that is so that you can stretch this out the entire length of the model and get really good reception for the receiver. The other cool thing about this and the important thing is if you uncap the end here and blow into this tube while the cylinder is underwater you can check for leaks. So by putting a little bit of pressure inside the cylinder you can immediately identify if there are any leaks and exactly where those are. Uh, something a little bit different from the standard sub drivers, I've got upgraded click-on connectors. These are magnetic linkage connectors. Standard ones do come with the cylinder when you buy it but they're a little bit smaller. I wanted to have a much stronger bite on these magnetic connectors. The other thing, I've replaced the standard 1 16th seals with these uh, brass um, 1 8th inch diameter seals and these utilize uh, cup seals which are exceptionally high quality and rated for uh, extreme depth without causing a lot of binding on your linkage. Something else to note, you can see this brass rod 
running up and down the length of the tube. This is the um, U-connector for the forward dive planes. So basically it transfers the motion from the rear of the cylinder up over the top along the length of the cylinder and then connects to the forward dive planes. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. But again, you got a magnetic connector right there. So when we take off this end cap, as we're going to do momentarily, you just simply pull it apart so that you don't have to undo any connections. Of the two ends, the motor compartment is a little trickier to get out because of course it's connected to the equipment tray so it doesn't have that flexibility to twist back and forth, but it is the same idea. Put the screwdriver in the slot and then just move around the perimeter until that seal kicks out. And you can do the rest by hand. We've got uh, three connections. We've got one for the servo for the ballast system that connects to the BLM failsafe unit. That gets disconnected. We've got our main power. I will disconnect that. And then we've got the pump control underneath right there. So now we've got our main body of our subdriver. Um, you can see the electronics compartment with the three leads. If we look inside, you can see the servo in there that moves the linkage for the ballast system. And it also presses that micro switch to turn the pump on, which blows the ballast. Central ballast tank, I've got also a gas backup system installed in here so you've got emergency control of your uh, boat to bring it up to the surface if required. All right, now we are looking at really the business end of the boat and this looks like a mess but when you break it down system by system this isn't bad at all. Let's start on the, the top of the unit. Here is the six channel receiver connected to all of the servos and failsafe module as well as the automatic pitch controller which is on the side. That's an ADF4 or APC4, sorry, automatic pitch control 4. We've got uh, four servos, only three are utilized and those run through the seals to these uh, outputs on the outside there. We've got our electronic speed controller. This is an Mtronics sub 10 40 amp electronic speed controller. And if we take a look on the bottom, we can see the air pump. And that basically blows out the ballast tank to surface the boat. Plumbed in there, we've got a float valve and that serves to ensure that you do not accidentally flood your uh, electronics compartment if the snorkel ends up failing for whatever reason the water will flow in here float a valve and seal it off so that it'll be impossible to um, flood your compartment. Last thing to note obviously is our main drive motor right there. It runs through an internal gearbox uh, I believe three to one gear reduction to our output shaft on the back side. So you'll know there are a couple of electronic modules in there that some of you may not be familiar with and I uh, identified them when I went through the cylinder. The two that I'm talking about are the, uh, the APC4 and the BLM module. Now the APC4 is an older version uh, of the modern 82 pitch controller that we offer on the NautilusDryDocks.com and the sole purpose behind this unit is to control the rear dive planes of the boat to keep the boat on a level keel throughout its operation and that helps make it very easy to keep the boat at a nice even periscope depth when you drive it. So basically what it's got on board is a little accelerometer and uh, or, or a, a level for lack of a better term and when you've got your boat you've got forward dive planes and you've got aft dive planes 
you're going to dive the boat. The boat's going to want to pitch forward. The rear dive planes connected to that pitch controller know that the boat is out of pitch and so it'll adjust the rear planes to compensate, pull the back end down and make things level again. So what happens in practical application, the forward planes tip forward, as it moves the rear ones tip down and everything happens kind of all at once nice and evenly. Now I identified channel 6 as an override and the neat thing about that is you can command uh, an emergency dive or an emergency surface and when you do that you would pitch your forward dive planes forward the rear dive planes up that'll tip the boat forward and it'll submerge exceptionally quickly alternatively you can do an emergency surface forward planes tip up the nose goes up you dive that down and the boat's going to dive up at an angle or surface at an angle come up out of the water for you so that's a really neat feature uh, if you want it. Most of the time you don't even touch those uh, rear plane controls. Uh, you don't need to touch them. Another neat feature of that is if you're running low on channels on, on your radio, so say for example you've only got a four channel radio, you can actually have those aft planes operate autonomously. They need no signal input from the receiver, they just need 5 volt power. So you can just connect them to your uh, 5 volt in and they'll control those rear dive planes all by themselves, no input needed. Pretty cool stuff. The other module that I talked about was the BLM or battery and link monitor. And this is a fail safe device that is great to have in your boat because it serves two functions. One, it monitors the signal from your transmitter and in the case of a loss of signal, it initiates an emergency surface. So what would end up happening is the uh, unit would identify the lack of a valid signal from the transmitter. It would wait, in this particular case, seven seconds. It will blow ballast for 10 seconds, and then it will return to neutral again, theoretically with the boat sitting on the surface of the water. All of those durations and what they actually do are completely user selectable. It's a great unit. There's onboard menus that you can set the duration, what happens, what position things go into. It's very, very cool. The other feature that I mentioned was the battery level indicator and what that does is it identifies what type of battery that you have uh, through the initial setup procedure that you go through and when the voltage drops below a certain level it will again initiate that fail safe mode bringing the boat back up to surface. So if you notice that the boat is not wanting to stay down when you try and dive it, um, odds are good your battery is too low and it's time to come in for a recharge. Now that we've taken this thing apart, it's time to put it back together again. So I'm going to grab our motor compartment, our equipment tray here right now. And as I mentioned when I was taking it apart, there's three connections. There is our main uh, battery connection that's made up through this Dean's connector. There is our servo connector that mounts to the back of the BLM device. And if we spin on the bottom, you can see this little micro connector on the bottom for our pump power, and that gets connected. Three connections, nice and simple. So all that done, I'm going to tuck this into the compartment. I'm just going to give the battery wire a little tug there to pull out the excess. We're going to slide this in, making sure that we keep our float valve tucked up next to the top. As we go, we want to also make sure that we're not pinching any wires between these bulkheads because they can be sharp and you do not want to short anything out. We're going to continue to slide that back. And you can see I've got two black marks, one right there and one right there. We're going to line those up just like this. And getting this back in, it is actually a pretty tight fit on this particular unit. So I'm going to show you the uh, Bob approved technique for getting this put back together again. What we're going to do is uh, simply stand the unit up on its end. Um, 
grip it at the top there. There we go. That was much higher than I thought it was going to be. Uh, making sure we're not touching any of those linkages or anything. And we're just going to press from the back, press it down, just like that. Moving to the other end, we've got our battery, we've got our main battery connector. We'll slide our battery in there just like that. Connect the battery to the remote switch with the Dean's connector. I'm going to take the antenna for the remote on off switch and I'm going to tuck it into that battery compartment along with all of this extra wire. Push it in. And it doesn't really matter what orientation that cap is. Uh, you can just simply push it into place just like that. So now we've got a completely made up cylinder. Should be all ready to go in theory. Let's, uh, let's give it a try. I'm going to spin this around. So we can see everything in operation, in theory, if it works. I'm going to turn our transmitter on first, always transmitter first. And then we're going to hit the power button on the uh, remote key fob. All right, now that everything is together, let's test the functionality of the cylinder. Get my radio in view there so you can see what we're doing. Turn the transmitter on first, always transmitter first. We're going to use our key fob here. We're going to hit the on button. We've got full voltage indicated by the four LEDs on the battery and link monitor. And we've got power lights on our electronic speed controller uh, indicating that we have power. So uh, with that said, let's, uh, let's test a few of the functions here. Let's test our rudder, forward dive planes, rear dive planes, and throttle. Very good. And the other thing I'm going to show is the uh, correct operation of the automatic pitch controller. Um, if we take a look at that output, which is this one right here, uh, let's see if we can do this. As I move this back and forth, that moves in and out. And it's hard to see, but it is working. You're going to have to take my word for it. So um, I'm going to turn this off, turn off the transmitter. Next step is installation into the boat. All right, installation of the cylinder is exceptionally straightforward. Uh, we'll make sure that we've got the cylinder oriented properly. We'll spread apart this Velcro hold down here, drop the cylinder in place. And what we're going to want to do is keep the cylinder forward of where it's supposed to be. And before I drop it down, I just want you to make note there is a small hole right forward of this second ballast intake here just next to the coupler that I have in place and that's going to go into a brass pin in the bulkhead of the boat. So what we're going to do is start kind of from the back, orient our drive shaft, slide things forward, line up that pin and drop it down. You'll notice all of these linkage connectors in the back snapped into place immediately with nothing needed to be done by me. Let's take our antenna here and we'll just tuck it next to the boat. Runs along the entire length of the boat. We'll thread the Velcro underneath that linkage. Tighten it down. And there we go. Very solid, in place, locked down, can't come out. Linkages are all made up. 100% ready to go.
All right, now that the cylinder is in place, let's talk a little bit about the plumbing. And uh, it's actually pretty straightforward for this particular unit. Um, we've got an in and an out, and I tested that with the pump on, and you can actually feel the suction uh, or the blowing out of each one of these nipples that come off that motor bulkhead. So in this particular case, on the left-hand side, this is the out, and it's going to connect to the uh, left-hand nipple here, the, the one that's single with no pass-through. That goes in and down into the ballast tank. The other one is the in, and it wraps around here, goes to the one side of this double-sided pass-through. The other side gets connected to the snorkel valve, and you can see that right here. This goes in the sail, and you can see it moving up and down. And the idea behind this is that when the boat submerges, that float moves up, seals the intake, and to surface, the boat will actually pump air from the dry compartments, the battery compartment and the electronics compartment, into the ballast tank. When the boat surfaces, that float drops, that valve opens, the pressure is equalized, and then the air is drawn from the surface into the ballast tank. So, sounds a little bit complicated, but once you think about it, it's pretty straightforward, and it's much easier when you see these parts, uh, obviously, in front of you. Just take a look at the bottom, how that is set up in there. Uh, this is the linkage for our bow planes. You can see that in operation right there. Um, you can see those bow planes moving. And then there's that nipple for the valve, the snorkel valve, and that's what the other end of that hose gets attached to. All right, I've connected the intake valve right there. I'm going to the hull into place and you heard that click the bow planes uh, linkage snapping into place just gonna press down on the hull here get those orientation pins engaged there we go let's fire up our radio here and test some functions power on the boat there we go. Let's move this back a bit so you can see what's going on. So we'll test a, a few of the, uh, the functions out here. We got rudder, got our forward dive planes. We've got our rear dive plane override and our throttle. You can see that I am all geared up with some safety equipment, some leather gloves and some safety glasses. And there's a good reason for that, and that is because we're going to be filling up the propel canister on board this particular boat, and we're just going to be safe about it. Um, this is Badger Propel. Uh, you can get it from your local hobby store. It's used for airbrush propellant. There is uh, an adapter that goes on the top of the can and it'll get pressed down on the top of this little straighter valve. And to fill it up, uh, it's fairly simple. You uh, align the canister, push down firmly, and just wait for the gas to stop flowing. And that's it. We now have a charge in the emergency blow um, canister on board the submarine. Let's take a quick look inside that inner workings and we'll show you how that works. All right, we are now looking at the uh, inside of that watertight cylinder in the ballast compartment. And uh, I'm gonna hit the dive command. You can see that linkage move. And what that does is it opens up a, a valve up here now if I move it the other way, in a command to surface, you don't hear any gas escaping, but the pump is on. You can hear that little hiss there, so the, the pump is activated. So in normal operation, um, only the pump is used. 
Now, what I did to achieve that is I actually set the endpoint on channel five in my radio to uh, 64%, and that just basically made it so that the servo can't pull far enough to activate the Schrader valve that you see nestled in there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the functionality of the emergency fail safe, and what I'm gonna do I'm going to back out just a little bit here and uh, I'm going to turn off the power for the radio and there should in theory be a seven second delay and then we're going to see a poof of air of gas coming out of there in theory so let's see what happens two three four five six seven There we go, that was the emergency blow, 10 seconds, back to normal. Perfect, perfect operation of the blow. Turn the radio back on. Battery and link monitor shows I've got good signal again and I've once again got control over the model. So, everything looks like it's working great. Holy man, that was a lot to take in, wasn't it? Uh, if you're not initiated into the hobby, there's gonna be a lot of things that were probably a little bit hard to understand. Uh, really, you have to get them in front of you. You need to be able to put your hands on them and then things start to make sense. And obviously there's people and resources out there that will help you get through it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I enjoyed making it. This is gonna be going off to its customer here in the next day or two. And we're gonna be moving on to the next project. So if you have any questions about what you saw or you're interested in this hobby of remote controlled submarines, I would love to hear from you. Email me anytime, bob at rc-sub.com. I would love to talk to you. Again, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com. Thanks for joining me. We will catch you next time.